Before we get started, let me apologize once again to all the viewers who've been complaining about the narrator I'm using. Believe me, I'm doing my best to bring the original one back. The narrator I'm using now is actually harder to manage, and I have to put in extra work to make it sound normal compared to the previous one. I hope you can understand the situation. So without further ado, fasten your pants, and let's get started. Out of this door might come something, or we might send something through it, said Sergio Bertolucci, who was director for research and scientific computing at CERN in 2009. CERN, with their Large Hadron Collider, is the most illustrious, prominent, celebrated, renowned, respected, and distinguished scientific institution in the world. So why has Elon Musk, the CEO of SpaceX, Tesla, and X, called it demonic technology? Well, it's a meme. He's only joking, right? I guess. I don't know. But every joke has some basis in reality. The folks at CERN don't seem to appreciate humor, so they didn't respond to the post. Their logo is a thinly disguised 666, which the Bible tells us is the number of Satan, the king of the demonic hordes. Isn't CERN the foremost authority on particle physics? Why the thinly veiled religious reference? I'm asking because the scientific community is quick to distance themselves from religion. Can a company really be this bad in PR? Well, you can read anything into a logo if you look hard enough, a skeptic might say. And I'd accept that explanation if there weren't so much more. CERN is credited with inventing the World Wide Web. They also came up with the WWW, abbreviation that goes before every website. In Hebrew Gematria, the letter W equals 6. WWW, therefore, translates to 666. Again, of all the letters they could have chosen. By now, hundreds of millions of people have come across conspiracy theories referencing CERN. The PR department at CERN could have said, oh, this is not a good look. Maybe it's time we change our logo. But that didn't happen. The most powerful magnet used by the company is called CERN Axion Solar Telescope which is abbreviated C-A-S-T. The original name of the device was Solar Axion Telescoping Antenna, or S-A-T-A-N. Did someone finally conclude that directly calling it Satan might be a little too direct? Why even start out with that name? CERN was involved in the making of the movie Angels and Demons. It has a web page that proudly talks about it. On that page, CERN displays an illuminated angel, a symbol of Lucifer, the Shining One. How many coincidences do we need before we say, maybe the folks at CERN are really into all this Satan stuff? Before I continue the video, please give a like if you've learned something. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell so you won't miss any updates. Finally, watch until the end to avoid any misunderstandings. Thank you. My first hint that there's something shady about CERN was their close association and cooperation with NASA, a company that is fake as it gets. What a coincidence that both organizations seem to have been fired up about the eclipse on April 8, 2024. Prior to the eclipse, their Large Hadron Collider, or LHC, had been dormant for two years. The article in the Daily Mail did not explain why the collider was powered up on the same day as the eclipse nor what they hoped to discover. It merely said that the LHC was going to smash together protons. Hasn't it already done this? How many more times are they going to smash together protons? To what ends? Wasn't there something more positive one could have done than perpetually shooting two things at each other? Fired three rockets at the eclipse. I got the sense that this eclipse meant more to CERN and NASA than the public was aware of. Seeing how CERN is obsessed with satanic symbolism, it could have something to do with this. Or this. The horned devil of Christian teaching is closely related to the horned god of the underworld, which the ancient Celts called Cernanus. The CERN in Cernanus means horned. This Celtic plate shows Cernanus as the lord of the ring and holder of the serpent. CERN is mostly 300 feet underground, not too far away from that underworld. CERN is located in the town St. Guinness Pauli, near Geneva. 
This might seem like a stretch, but linguistically speaking, Pauli looks like the modern rendering of the Latin and Greek Apollyon. Apollyon is a deity known as the Destroyer. Mythologists equate the Destroyer with Satan. Perhaps it's no coincidence that CERN features a statue of Shiva the Destroyer on their grounds. A Bible verse comes to mind. To him was given the key of the bottomless pit, and he opened the bottomless pit, and they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. CERN's self-description is gateway to the universe. In their publications, they say they are interested in detecting and creating black holes. One could argue that's another word for bottomless pit. They have also stated publicly that the electromagnets on their Large Hadron Collider are 100,000 times more powerful than the Earth's magnetic field. Wow! There are plenty of online videos by conspiracists claiming that CERN opens the abyss, creates portals for demons to enter, messes with timelines, creates the Mandela Effect, strange electromagnetic and sky phenomena above CERN, etc. The idea is that fallen angels are somehow trapped in what Jesus called the outer darkness and that CERN is attempting to let them out of their trap and into our world. I have no way to prove or disprove any of these ideas. I like to stick with what's known, but what's known is more than enough to conclude there's something shady about CERN. Even without the satanic angle, something is off. Let's deconstruct CERN from a purely scientific angle in the next episode. This video is just an introduction to something I find really fascinating. I've split this into two or three parts because it was too long and I didn't want to take up too much of your time. If you find this video interesting, I look forward to seeing you in part two. Now it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.